alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd ahabat fillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in surah al-taghabun after a'udhu billah min ash-shaytan ar-rajim bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim yusabbihu lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard wa al-mulk wa la al-hamd wa ala kulli shayin qadir huwa alladhi khalaq al خلق لكم فمنكم كافر ومنكم مؤمن والله بما تعملون بصير خلق السماوات والأرض بالحق وصوركم فأحسن صوركم صوركم وإليه مصير الله تبارك وتعالى says في كتابه الكريم يسبح لله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض له الملك ولا الحم ولا كل شيء كدير الله تبارك وتعالى let us know that everything in his creation uh, praises him. يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Everything that is in the heavens and the earth praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether we recognize it or we fail to recognize it, we recognize it or not, that everything in its own way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created it, it praises him to barak wa ta'ala. And for him is the dominion. Everything belongs to Allah. And all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All praise, alhamd. This alhamd, it is for, this is thana al Allah, thana al Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thana al Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. This is uh, the full praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And alhamd, we don't make hamd for the creation. I don't say, uh, we don't say, for example, in, in the Arabic lang language, Hamid Khalid Ahmida. We don't say that uh, Khalid praised Ahmed with alhamd. We would use thana. We would use some other term uh, in Arabic to denote this praising of uh, by Khalid of Ahmed. So in Arabic, we use this Alhamd. This is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lahulhamd. Lahulmukul alhamd. You know, for him is the dominion, and for him all praise belongs to him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the praise returns back to Allah wa ta'ala. So when we think of any ni'mah, min ni'amillah, from his beautiful and vast creation, and from the many ni'am, the favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you, from your wealth, from your provisions, from your family, from the many great blessings that Allah has praised you with, praise as Allah has, has given you, then praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those many, for the many ni'am. And he is over all things omnipotent. Nothing is outside of the ability of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Hu ala kulli shayin qadir. He can do anything that he wants. He is over all things omnipotent. Nothing, there's, he has no naqs. He has no shortcomings. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is per perfect, unlike his creation. Hu alladhi khalaqa lakum faminkum kafirun wa minkum Mu'min, wallahu bima ta'amaluna basir. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala then says, huwa ladhi khalakakum. He's the one who created you. So we have to continually acknowledge, and really, if we really contemplate these ayat in our lives, and this is why the importance of reading the Quran and reading the Sunnah, and this is advice first and foremost to myself, because the more I talk about this, it helps put everything in life in perspective. All those things that you may desire of Muharram, or all those things that you raise up to a high status and you think that are so great. Look at so-and-so's beautiful car. So-and-so has so much wealth. This one has this and this one has this in the dunya. But in fact, all the praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah has favored you with Islam. And Allah created everything. He created you. He created you 
And from that creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you a choice. From amongst you are those who believe, uh, those who disbelieve, kafir, women whom mu'min. And from them are mu'min. Some, some are believers. Have them in hidayah. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the guy. Whoever Allah guides, he is guided. And whoever he leaves to stray, that he lets go and wander off the path, he allows them this disobedience. He allows them to disbelieve. Tabarak wa ta'ala. Have him in hidayatihi. Wa have him in adlihi. This is from his justice. This is from his wisdom. This is from his guidance. Because he created you. And he gave us a choice to be obedient slaves or disobedience and may Allah increase us in obedience to him. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. And Wallahu bima ta'maluna basir and Allah knows everything uh, that you he's ever watchful over you. He knows everything that you're doing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Surah uh, Ali Imran Qal Qal Subhana Verily, nothing is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the earth, in the heavens of the earth. Nothing is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows, for example, here's a, a mithal. I have ability to see. I have ability to hear. I hear the chipmunks. I can see certain spiders and different creatures here, but my perception and my sensory perception and all and, and my senses are limited. I'm limited in what I can hear. I'm limited to what I can see. If we were probably to canvas just one, a few feet from where I'm at, all the life that is here under my feet around me, I'm unaware of, and it's all and, and nothing. There is nothing hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in the heavens and earth. Allah sees all of it. There is nothing that resembles Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He is the all seeing and all hearing. So we hear and we see, but our hearing and sight is unlike Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing is hidden from Allah because His is perfect and we are created and ours is limited. But we hear and we see, but we don't make a resemblance between us and our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala because our hearing and our sight is deficient and it's unlike Him. There's nothing like Him. We don't say, oh Allah has limbs as the certain groups and sects claim about Allah or certain groups and sects claim that Ahlul Sunnah says about Allah. No. We say what Allah says about Himself, Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And what the Messenger وسلم, said in His authentic Sunnah about Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses divine names and attributes. However, His are divine names and attributes. They are perfect. And we have attributes, but ours are imperfect and limited. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Bima ta'amaluna basiya. And He sees. Uh, he, he sees uh, everything that you do. So there's nothing hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether you believe or disbelieve, you can't hide your sins from Allah. You can't hide your good deeds from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala knows everything and created everything. Tabarak wa ta'ala. Khalaq samawati wal ard bil haqq. He created the heavens and earth with the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He created us, you know, based on His divine wisdom and truth. And He created us with the haq, with the truth. And He created us to worship Him alone, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that this is the divine purpose, this is uh, what we... Uh, what the true reality is and, and our true purpose of, even though we lose lose sight of it all the time, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I've not created mankind and the jinn except 
for the purpose of worshiping me. So we know that the divine purpose of why we were created is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in our various forms and shapes. And he, he, he made us in beautiful uh, images. And you know we could be like some other creatures. But instead Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his divine wisdom has made us also in different nations and tribes and shapes and colors and defects. But still it's in accordance with his divine wisdom and still there is immense beauty in all uh, human beings. If they exhibit it and if they exhibit it by Iman, then it's that internal beauty, the best, that which really distinguishes and that what distinguishes us is taqwa, is God fearfulness. Wa ilayhi masir, and to him we will return. So we have to realize and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And un, like the rest of creation, you subhu lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al Everything praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So be of those who praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often. And really, if we honestly take the formula that's right there in the Quran and we understand, our lives would be so, we would live such a better quality of life and a better quality of life, uh, a better, uh, a more quality lifestyle. Our life and our lifestyle and the problems, uh, many of our problems come to us because of our sins. Because we immerse ourselves in sins and we forget Allah. If we're making dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often, we will have less time for sin and we'll be less inclined towards sin. And if we're remembering the purpose of our creation and reflecting on the ayat, وَمِنْ ayati اللَّيْلَ nahar, And from his signs is the, is the, the day and the night. If we're reflecting on his, 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 his creation, his beautiful creation and the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we'll have less time to envy and look at what other people have and say, oh, wow, look at Susie's Mercedes. Look at so-and-so has a $2 million home. Oh, Epstein just died, and what did he do? And this and what has so many billions of dollars, and Bill Gates has this, and look at the companies and the finances. We'll have less time for that. And we'll be busy looking at the haq, at the more important things in this life. And that takes struggle. And that takes remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those who contemplate his ayat often and who make dhikr of him often to be of the dhakirin wa dhakirat wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam